Good evening. There's probably no proper way to introduce our guest tonight because you're about to see a familiar face, one that is known to Muslims and non-Muslims as well, particularly the Christians. It is our brother Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Brother Ahmed Didat has been a moving vehicle all around the world. He's been debating Christians, uh, particularly Christian and Jews. priests and Jews and Jews as well <laughs> as he already injected and uh, we will be discovering why is he stressing this and some people uh, do think that he's uh, aggressive in the way he's doing it but we'll, we'll see tonight if that is the case. Uh, welcome brother and Sheikh Ahmed Didat to the Saudi television. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Right. Yes, uh, maybe we need to have a glimpse of uh, your background yes, yeah. before we get into the main subject yes. of tonight. Yes. So please. Well, you see, people ask me, how did I come about to becoming a specialist in the field of comparative religion? Yes. Whether I went out of my way, attended a university? No. Uh, it was more by accident that I have become what I am. But I don't really believe in accidents. To me, these are all the workings of the Almighty. He has chosen for everybody a goal, as he says in the Holy Quran. Said everyone has a goal, a destination towards which he is being driven. First Abikul Khairat, so Allah says, compete with one another in good works. And Allah will bring you all together wheresoever ye may be. So it was force of circumstances after leaving school, I was working in a country shop some 25 miles outside the city of Durban. In South Africa. In South Africa. And across the valley from the shop, there was a university where they were training Christian missionaries. Uh -huh. And these missionaries, they came to do the shopping in the shop in which I worked. And when they came, whatever they had learned, they were out to practice. Uh -huh. And the first customers, we were the first customers of those. Right. in that field. So they would pose problems to us, questions to us. He says, you know, your Prophet Muhammad had so many wives. Wallah, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> See, when these things are okay. being thrown at me, mm -hmm. I was about 16, 17 year old then. Yes. I know nothing about that. How many wives the Prophet had, I had knew nothing. Then he says, your Prophet, he spread his religion at the point of the sword, which is the commonest charge against Islam. Islam is spread at the point of the sword. And again, he says, you know, your prophet, he copied his book, the Quran, from the Jews and the Christians. Now, all these things I knew nothing about. The only thing I knew about Islam, as well as the other workers, yes. young men who had just left school, cheap labor. The only thing we knew about Islam was that we are Muslims. What made us Muslims? Well, we read the Kalima, the Shahada. And if I met you those days, and if I asked you where you come from, you tell me where you come from, I said, are you Muslim? You said, yes. I said, read the Shahada. What and is the Shahada, shahada is the la ilaha illallah, yes. Muhammad yes. Rasulullah. Now, if you can say yes. that, hmm. you are a Muslim. Right. You pass. But what that meant, I didn't know. Nobody knew. I this see. was like a magic formula. If you can say it, utter it, you are a Muslim. If you can't utter, you are not a Muslim. Hmm. So that was the, 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 the extent of my knowledge. But now these people are posing problems to me, and I can't take it. Right. So I'm thinking of leaving the job and running away. But jobs are very difficult to find those days. And fight back, but you can't fight back without knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a dilemma. But Allah bari ta'ala is musabibul asbab. He creates opportunities. I had a hunger for reading. And one Sunday, I'm going into my boss's warehouse and rummaging through a, a pile of old newspapers, looking for something better than a newspaper to read, like a magazine. Mm. So I take some newspapers, put them on one side, find a new magazine, put it on the other side for later reading, and so on. While I'm going through this process, I come across a worm-eaten book full of mildew. A what? Worm-eaten. 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 Nice. There's holes, holes inside. You know? I see. The worms had eaten it. Right. You see? And when I pick it up, it's full of mildew. So I start to sneeze. Hmm. But I'm, I'm attracted by the title. It read in Latin script, is Harul Haq, I Z H A R U L H A K, which man? Which no, at that time I didn't know is Harul Haq. It sounds to me like Muslim, 
but it's written in Western letters. It's not written in Arabic script. Hmm. So what is Izharul Haq? I'm, I'm repeating the Izharul Haq. What is Izharul Haq? At the bottom in smaller types is written in English, the truth revealed. Hmm. So I said, right, maybe Izharul Haq means the truth revealed. And I started opening the book and reading. This was by uh, Sheikh Abdullah uh, Sindhi. Hmm. As, 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 um, you know, he was uh, an Arab gentleman who had written this book in Arabic, which was later translated into English, into Gujarati, into Urdu, you know, to help the people of India to meet the Christian challenge. Because you see, when the British people conquered India, they realized that at any time anybody will give them trouble, it will be the Muslims. Mm -hmm. So if they can convert these people and teach them to turn the other cheek, as Jesus Christ had right. thought, that if he who strikes you on the right cheek, give him the other, he said, the problem is solved. You can rule India for a thousand years. So they started pouring in the missionaries like frogs in the rainy season. And this is about the debates that took place between the Christians and the Muslims. So it made interesting reading. So whatever I read now, I now learned those verses. And when these students came along, these theological students, these missionaries, you started I asked no, I asked them, I said, look, where do you go? On Sunday after church, where do you go? He said, no, I'm at home. I said, look, where do you live? So he gives me direction because there are no streets in, hmm. in the countryside. Yes. So I said, right, I'll see you at 11 on Sunday. So I go along and have discussions. So this became my hobby. And later on, the hobby became my full-time job. I see. That's how I have become what I am. All right. That's, that's interesting. Um, let's get to uh, the point where you started to, I, I understand that you're almost learning Bible by heart. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Was this the reason? The outcome of, of, the, of that book. Of, of you see, in that book now, the quotations were given. Hmm. So I went and bought a six penny, six penny, that's a five cents, uh, second hand New Testament. Yes. And whatever I read here, I marked it. That Matthew chapter so and so, verse so and so, contradicts Mark chapter so and so, verse so and so. This is here, Luke, this contradicts so and so. So now, these very things that I, I read, I memorize them and I go along and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So talking, talking, I myself, talk myself. Right. into this position. What has been the outcome of all these discussions and debates with Christians? What have you learned from this? Is this a way that uh, you can introduce Islam into these people and are some of them convinced? We have in our small society that we have in South Africa, we have converted more than 7,000 people so far. Over a long period, but about 7,000 people. 7,000 people we have converted from Hinduism, from Christianity, and an occasional Jew, we have converted them. Hindus, Christians, and Jews to Islam. But now, you see, this method, I didn't know that this was a Quranic method. Whatever I am doing is actually Quranic. But somehow, we Muslims have neglected that field. You see, in the Holy Quran, Allah Bari Ta'ala tells us, وَقَالُوا And they say, that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There is no heaven for you. There is no salvation for you. Unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. In response to that, Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum. This is their wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. Don't be frightened. Pull. Tell them. Ha tu burhanakum. Produce your proof. In Kuntum Sadiqin, if you are speaking the truth, show us your certificate that entitles you to heaven and destines us to hell. Can we please have a look at your certificate? Mm -hmm. Now, the Muslim, I'm studying them, nobody is asking for his certificate. You see, it is a natural thing, natural thing to do if you make a claim and if I have any doubt, I ask you for your proof. Right. But the Muslim is not asking for his proof. So, somehow, naturally, because Islam is a natural religion, naturally I'm asking for proof. And he produces it in his book, the Bible. So I deal with it. Okay. And which when I deal with it, he goes berserk because he's got no way out. For example, for example, yes. you see the Christians say that Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. But before that, when I deliver lectures on these topics, I tell them, I said, look, there is not a single verse anywhere in the Christian Bible, an encyclopedia, where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. Nowhere. Because that's what the Quran tells us, right. that he never claimed divinity. Mm -hmm. So I put it to them that there's no way. And they get puzzled. They said, look, our Bible. I said, what does it say? 
There isn't. There isn't a single sentence from the mouth of Jesus yes. saying, I am God, worship me. And yet, there are a thousand million people who believe that he is God Almighty in human form and they all worship him. I see. So the nearest they come to is the expression that Jesus said, I and my father are one. I mean, we are the same. Mm -hmm. So I said, yes, I have read that. He said, I and my father, meaning God Almighty, are one. That means, I am also God. He is God, I am God. So I'm asking the learned man of Christianity, this is I discovered, that he doesn't know. I said, what is the context? You see, what you quoted is the text. John, there's a gospel of St. John, chapter 10, verse 30. You quoted, I want the context, the text that goes with it, before or after. Right. And believe me, in 40 years, I have not come across a single learned man of Christianity who knows the context. They only learn the text. The text. And nobody knows the context. Hmm. So when you start on that level, then the man asks you, said, do you know the context? I said, of course, I know the context. So he said, what is the context? So I give it to him. I said, you see, we start from verse 23 of John chapter 10. It says there, and Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Hmm. He's alone. Yes. Then came the Jews around about him, meaning they surrounded him. And said, pointing at brandishing a finger in his face, so how long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Meaning they're alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That is the charge. Mm -hmm. First charge they're living against Jesus is that you're not talking clearly. You're not putting forth your claim. In answer to that, Jesus says, I told you. Means I did. Mm -hmm. But you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Says, my sheep, mean my followers, hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, mm -hmm. and they shall never perish. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So the, these are the present words of the Bible. Right, that's verse 28. Okay. Verse 29, he said, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, he said, I and my Father are one, in the context. God Almighty, verse 28, sees to it that once you accept faith, you remain in faith. I, as a teacher, as a master, I also see to you that you remain in faith. We are both one in this, to see that you remain in faith. Not in power, majesty, glory, knowledge, nothing. But the Jews were looking for trouble. You see, they didn't like his preaching. He condemned them for the ceremonialism, for the hypocrisies, going for the letter of the law and forgetting the spirit. So now they got a chance. He's alone, says, give him a good bashing. But now to put yourself into that mood, you want to, you know, create that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So they started. So Jesus, un in answer to that, they pick up, st in verse 31, yes. he said, and they picked up stones again to stone him. Because they were looking for a fight. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not but for blasphemy, mm. because that thou being a man, makest thyself a God. In answer to that, if Jesus claimed divinity, he said, look, if I am God, what else can I say? But no. He says, now he reasoned with the Jews, is it not written in your law? Is it not written in your law? The Hebrew word for law is Torah. Yes. Arabic, Torah. Yes. See? Is it not written in your Torah? And he quotes, I said, ye are gods. He's quoting from the 82nd Psalm, mm -hmm. one of the books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I said, ye are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, meaning you can't contradict me. Say ye of him, whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. Which means, look, if I said I am God, even then it's not too bad, because in our language we talk like that. Because in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, God Almighty speaks to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and he tells him, he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Then in the book of, uh, in the Psalms, he says, Ye are gods, all of you are gods, and most of you, uh, and all of you are the children of the Most High. All right. So what happens is, is now, this type of language is a biblical language, and it doesn't imply that they are gods. Yes. They are godly. So why are you finding fault with me? Now on that level, the Christian finds he's utterly helpless.
Because in the context is not what he is telling us. I see. And yet there still be deceived. No, no, we, no, no. The trouble right. is with us. Yeah. We haven't taken the trouble to enlighten them. Right. Allah has given us the knowledge yeah. how to see this book, that this Bible is a Jewish book, yeah. full of Jewish metaphors and similes, which the Western world doesn't understand. They are taking things which are metaphorical, literally. That's the problem. But you and I, and the Jew, he's also responsible. Yes. Because he's not educating the guy that, look, this is my language. And in my language, when I say this, literally, it doesn't mean that. All right. Okay. So we are all at fault. The Jew is at fault. He's getting it in the neck. And we are also at fault. We also get it in right. the neck. Well, I hope that we are not at fault when we ask for a break here. Yes. And for the time, since we are limited in our time, yes. but we will be coming yes. in the next episode, inshallah, and talk particularly about the meaning of father in there. And right. Does it have a proof right. for the Christians right. that Jesus is the Son of God? Right. We'll right. be talking about right. this, inshallah. Right. Right. You have been with the uh, great and famous Da'ya Ahmad Didad, who's been a caller of Islam uh, for more than 40 years now. And he will be with us in the next episode talking about it will be just pointed to you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Pleasure. Come to this episode. Sure, thank you. And we talked earlier about uh, the, uh, the Christians. Yes. Not correct in bringing that to, uh, it's, you know, yeah. as a proof for, for the Christians. For the, for the Christians. Correct. All right. Now, how you come, you're taking that, although you do not believe, I know that from your debates, that the Bible is not the word of God, yes. and it's been distorted, manipulated, yeah. being played with, and yes. uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not it's not the same format that was revealed to Jesus. That's correct. Peace be upon him. Correct. But let's first take the issue of the sonship. You're right. When Jesus is saying in so many verses of the Bible that he, I and the Father right. are one. Right. All right. So the word Father, yes. you see, is a very common expression also in the Bible. Uh -huh. In the, from the lips of Jesus, in the New Testament, which is as they call the so-called Injil, the New Testament, Jesus Christ, if you start with the Gospel of St. Matthew, which is the first Gospel, first book of the New Testament, the Gospel of St. Matthew, he uses the expression, your father, for God, your father, thy father, talking individual, he says, thy father, your father, I mean, it's speaking to more than one, your father, thy father, your father, thy father, mm. 13 times. Before one time he says, my father. Mm -hmm. And this is the amazing thing. That the learned man of Christianity, he, he ignores the 13 times that he's telling that God is your father, instead of Rab. You see, this word Abu was used. He's a father in heaven, you know, merciful God, you know, cherishing after his children. In that, in that context, He's saying, your father, thy father, 13 times. One time he says, my father, and the Christians hold on to that. He said, you see, he said, he's my father. Uh -huh. Then, son of God is also one of the commonest expressions in the Bible. Right. It's a very common expression for one who is a godly person. You start from the book of Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible. In chapter 6, verse 3, I'm quoting, it says, and the sons of God, many, many, in the plural, mm. saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them to wife all that they chose. Mm. In the book of Exodus, God says, according to the Bible, say, Israel is my son, Yaakov al -Salam. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Mm. Then in the book of Jeremiah, he says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. How can God have two firstborns? I but see. now, there are explanations, I can explain. Then, in the book of Psalms, Hazrat Dawud salam, David, the prophet David is made to say, he says, I will declare a decree unto thee, God is talking to him, yes. I will declare a decree unto thee, that thou art my son, mm -hmm. you Dawud, right. you are my son, this day have I begotten thee. Mm. Then in the New Testament we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. As many, anybody, everybody, every Tom, Dick and Harry, according to the scripture. If you follow the will and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, you are a son of God. I see. That is what it meant. It means nothing more than that. Because he's got sons by the tons. Okay. But if you ask the Christian, how many sons has he got? God. He says one. Mm -hmm. I said, look, your book is full of sons of God. I see. But no, the poor man, he's only made to see 
things that suits him and he doesn't see the other. This is a very innocent expression which they have twisted the meaning. But what have, historically speaking, yes. what has led the Christians, the massive uh, number of Christians, to believe that, God, that Jesus is the Son of God right. from, I think, uh, one of the verses. Right. And, you, see, uh, yes. you see, the reason is the this. That the Jewish, the, the Bible is a Jewish book, mm -hmm. written by Jews the for Testament. Jewish audience, old and the new. And new. Written for a Jewish audience. And they understood, or they ought to have understood what it meant. But now this book, with this message, the very first people who came into contact with that message were the Greeks and the Romans. The Greeks and the Romans were the very first people outside Palestine who came into contact with this message of a new son of God who had just come up in Palestine. Mm -hmm. But now to the Greeks and the Romans, what was metaphorical to the Jew became literal to the Greek because they had their man gods beyond counting. Mm. They had Jupiter. These are the names in the ancient mythologies. Yes. Yes. Jupiter, the god of heaven. Pluto, the god of hell. Vulcan was the god of fire. Neptune was the god of the sea. Mars was the god of war. And Zeus was the father of all these gods with his many wives and many children. He was on some planet with his many wives and many children, Zeus. Right. And he was sending his sons into the world as the need arose. His Apollo, his Horus, his Isis, his Osiris. This was pure mythology, fairy tale. But to a people who believe in mythology, mythology is not mythology, it's real. I see. So what was metaphorical to the Jew became little to the Greek. And they became the pioneers of that message to the Western world. So the Western world is looking at a Jewish book through Greek glasses, okay. as the Greek saw it. Yeah. If, they re if we help them to remove the glasses, yes. and say, let us look at a Jewish book as a Jew. You have no right to look at an Arabic book as a Westerner, or a Jewish book as a Westerner. You must look at an Arab, what he says, according to his language. Like in English. You see, an Englishman tells me that his fiance is a peach. It's the name of a fruit. Right. Peaches, you see. Right. She's a peach. Now, when he says he, she is a peach, he means she's a picture of perfection. Right. In goodness, looks, and everything, she is perfect. That's what he's trying to tell oh, me. Right. But now, if I tell that in my language to my wife, or in any other language, literally, it's a most nonsensical sentence. Right. Your wife's a peach, says three shillings a dozen, you yes. know, how many, one, half a real each? Your wife? Yes. Is that the price of your wife? No, no, no. You have to understand the English language as an Englishman. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the Hebrew language as a Hebrew. And you have to understand the Arabic language as an Arab. Then there's no problem. All right. So this is the problem. They're looking at a Jewish book through Greek glasses. Well, let's, let's uh, take our viewers one step ahead. Yes. Since we moved out of this now. Yes. Into how to move these glasses out of their eyes and see the truth. Right. In the Quran and about the Bible. Right, right, right. How could they do, do that? Now, this is... So the, the, the secret is in the verse I quoted, yes. where it says, Kul hatu burhanakum. You see, the man comes with his burhan. He has published for the, the world. The Bible in now 2,000 different languages. Mm. He's got 11 different Arabic Bibles for the Arabs alone. Mm. Different dialects, different larger, different script. Because their Moroccan script is different from what we are using. And your script is different from the one we are using in India and Pakistan. The, the Arabic is the same. But the way we form our letters, which is easier on our eyes, easy on the Moroccan eyes, dialects, they got 11 different Arabic Bibles. Well served. That's a Burhan. Yes. That's his Burhan. But now we were supposed to ask him for his Burhan. Mm. Without we asking, he's produced it. Now, we are duty bound. If we are asking for the Burhan, as the man produces the Burhan, we are to analyze that Burhan. This is the purpose when Allah tells you to demand proof. Yeah. So when proof is produced, you analyze it. And when you analyze it, you find it is not what he's telling you. So you reason with him with his language, his own language. He says, sir, when you say Jesus is the only begotten son, begotten, not made. That's what he says in his catechism. Right. So we ask him, Excuse me, please, you know, the Englishman or the American. What is to beget in your language? What are you trying to emphasize when you say begotten, not made? You are especially trying to tell me something. What? Will you please explain? And believe me, no American or Britisher will ever open his mouth. 
I want you to explain to me what you are really trying to tell me that Jesus was begotten, not made. In other words, it's not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Right. Every dog, pig and donkey was made by God. Right. As such, in this terminology of the Christian, God is the father of everything, of everybody. Right. But no, 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 Jesus is not like that. No. He was begotten, not made. So, please explain. And they so, didn't have an explanation. There's no. So, Allah bari ta'ala, he reacts. So, he said, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا And they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. He said, لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا عِدَّا It's one of the most abominable assertions one can make. تَكَادُ السَّمَوَاتُ يَتَفَتَّرْنَ مِنْهُ That is, the skies are ready to burst. وَتَنْشَقَّ الْأَرْضُ And the earth to split asunder. وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ حَدَّا And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلْرَّحْمَنِ وَلَدَا That they should say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. But now we have to reason with him according to his own background and experience. He said, now what are you trying to tell me? You see, God says to David, at the age of 40, perhaps a 200 pounder like myself, he said, this day have I begotten thee. Did he come out of his mother's womb, a 200 pounder, with his uniform and shield and all? Did he? No, no. You see, this word begotten day, it means today I brought you to this position I see. of being my chosen messenger. So that's the meaning of the word ittakhada. Right. So, so now that is what he's trying to say. Sure. But now you, in your language, you didn't have that. I see. So now he's understanding the other way around. So therefore now we have to reason with him, educate him, and inshallah we find that it's a very easy way of talking. Right. Except for the missionary, the vested interest, yeah. they react because they become helpless. Because when you're talking to him from his background, they say, look, this is what your book says, this is what your book says. So he gets frustrated. All right. What he are gets some of the interesting things that you have encountered with these missionaries in particular and the priests in your debates? Yes. Were they looking for truth or are they just fighting for themselves? No, the missionary has got his vested interest, his program. But the generality of Christianity, Christendom, I find them very reasonable. You know, it's an amazing thing that within masses, like I am, I happen to be one of the guides to the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere, which is in my town in Durban. And I get a lot of visitors, Christians and Jews. But out of every couple that come, one of them is siding with us. When we explain, either the husband or the wife, he agrees with us. If there are three, two agree with us. If there are five, at least three agree with us. It's an amazing thing. Though they are not converted, Majority. but they say, no, 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 we see your point of view. We you know, we see it's very clear, very clear. So in other words, we are not doing the job. We are not doing the job. We are failing them. All right. But otherwise, the people as a whole, they are ready to listen. Okay. Especially the Western, the American. All right. You see, he feels he's big and he's strong. So as such now, he can afford. You know, he's, he's trying to amuse you, but said, all right, tell us, what have you got? And he's listening. But you're not delivering the message. I see. And you don't know how to deliver the message. All right. We shall be knowing, inshallah, in the next episode, because we will not leave you just like that. Allah because Allah. we are interested in having more, and I think our viewers are interested in having more, on how we can deliver the message. And particularly, some point out the finger to you, right. saying that you've been so harsh right. on the people of Christendom right. when, when, you, when you debate them or talk to them. We'll discover why in the next episode. So, Inshallah. we have been with our uh, Sheikh and brother, indeed, our big brother, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, who's been uh, the caller of Islam uh, for more than 40 years. So, we'll be with him next time. Thank you very much for tonight. Thank you. Just <coughs> He has also saved us, you Saudis, from the Christian coming and knocking at your doors, because you will not allow any missionary to come and knock at your doors in Saudi Arabia.
بس بالمنطق كلها كلها كانها تابعه للكنيسه فهي جزيره العرب تعتبر كلها كانه هي بالزيت حتى لآلة أيضا سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد العرب إلى المسجد الأقصى هو ما أسرى من نفس المسجد هالبلد كل هي أوصى مع المسجد العرب نقول إن دوما نقول إن دوما في درجة عديدة لا يجتمع في الجزيرة العربية بناء استنقاط بالكون الرجل إن أرب الكون and they have to apply it as you can they have to apply it and have to apply it and also Sheikh Ali Mbali said Sheikh Maruf Duwalini once he had discussion with him for coming closer between the Muslims and the Christians and they asked him the question why don't you allow the churches in Venezuela he said it is considered the whole Venezuela as a mosque so it's not possible to have a mosque and inside the church it's just like the Vatican you have the whole Vatican you are not allowed to have the mosque inside the Vatican and that's the same but now that does not stop them from getting into your house with the boat. Yeah, yeah. There's a letter coming from Germany. From Germany. Address to a brother of ours in Bureda, Al Qasim. Mm -hmm. This comes by A, lands in Riyadh. And Riyadh sends it to Bureda. And the man, our man in Bureda, this is what he gets. This is what he gets. From Germany, these beautiful, these beautiful pieces. Just feel it like soup. Just feel it like soup. I'm going to tell you, 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 Beautiful, beautiful. So, so, free, free. Show him what you know. I love him. 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 يلهم عامي الجمرة مبشر كبير عن منطقة قريبة من الشام اسمها حوران أهلا كانوا جاهل التمام بعد ما أدفع أطعمهم حلويات مشية وغرهم قالوا الآب والأبن خذوا ستلاتة واحد قالوا كيف ستلاتة واحد قالوا هاي الأب هاي الأبن هاي الأب هاي صار واحد عامي جاهل قال له انتم عبدوه اعوج نحن بنعبده مستقيم. هذا اذا ريلي استعملت ريلي دين الفكره عن ابن ذا فيري بيسك بيبل يو نو دوزنت هاف اي نوليدج زي انديرستاند ماتش بيتر ذان ذا كريستيان. وان كريستيان فروم ذا ماشينري كيم تو ساوث اوف سوريا وران ذا كوزي اند ذا يوزلي دوز ار فيري ريتش ناتشورال بيبل. And he told him, you know, that after he tried to convince him that Trinity, you know, there is a father and son and the Holy Ghost. And he said, how, how is that? So he made, he made a talk like this, you know, one, two, three, three, three. And this is one, that's all that we really want. He said uh, that, you know, the man, one of the men who was doesn't study in England, you uh, uh, worship him crooked. All of this, the Christian is making effort. There is a murder. The Muslim, KK Alawi, some Muslim, Alawi, Alawi. He became a murder, Nasara, Christian. And he wrote a book to make us all into Christians. Alawi, I don't say you are the Sunni. No, you are the Sunni. This guy was a Sunni alone. I don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Islam. 
بعدين حاطينهم بلاستينهم وسط الكعب وسط الزرع تبع ما هو تعيشون؟ توصلوا نفس الزرف هذا اللي بعثوه على بريدا أول شيء عاطين آيات قرآنية كذا حتى يتوى عن بعدين عاطين بقى كتب عن عن المصارع وميزة عن الإسلام هذا الكتاب مؤلف من شخص كان سني مسلم وارتد إلى المسيحية مؤلف هذا الكتاب حتى يعني يشوف العباد عاد أحد طرق ال Christian for Muslims, they give this free. Christian witness among Muslims, they give shahada, tafsir, among Muslims. And on the cover, you find a Sudanese or a Ghanaian Muslim reading the Subhi. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yeah, Subhanallah. And written on the top, in Allah's Yubashuruti bi kalimati minku, Ismuhul Masih, Wa Isa ibn Maryama, in Arabic. So any Muslim who gets this, you kiss it, take it home and put it next to the Quran. A snake in the house, this is Christianity. But he makes you to accept it with the Quranic ayah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Kitab an al-Nasihiyyah, إن واحد يمكن أن يخدع شخصا واحدا طول العمر أو يخدع الناس كل يوما واحدا ولا يمكن أن يخدع الناس كل طول العمر تنفطع بالفطع وعد يوم زد when we have the French occupation the rules you know the children used to say that you can cheat one person all the time Uh, uh, but you can't all the people. All the people. <laughs> <laughs> There's another beautiful production. How do you pray? You know, putting your head down and putting the bomb up. Is, is that the way to pray? Hmm? Yes, Harumina Salah is Daniya. They were working. They were working. Very hard. Very hard. All of this. Christian, Christian, Christian. Three, three. Oh, okay. And what number of uh, no, the half of 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 the half على لسان كل مسلم حتى الجاهلي يصلي كما كان يصلي ما حدا بيتعلم الصلاه من هذا في عم يقول لك هاي بالنسبه لغير العرب بس ما بيعرفوا شيء ما عندهم فكره ابدا ابدا هذا غير العرب نحن نشوف اليوم امر عم نحن هو اخو الاهل انه عم يشتغلوا الليل والنهار نحن مسؤولين عند الله يوم القيامه عن تبليغ الاسلام انا جد يمكن أكثر من عشرين بعد دخلت كأوروبا غربية وكنت أحاضر وأجيب على أسئلة وجدت أنه ليس بينهم وبين الدخول في الإسلام إلا أن يعرفوه ما بيعرفوا الإسلام ما هو وهذا واجب المسلمين اليوم أن يبلغوا الإسلام فالشيخ يقوم بعمل عظيم فعلا وقبل عندي أنا كتاب إصدار الحق للشيخ رحمة الله الهندي اللي كان كمان سابق في الميتاب كان فأنت تقوم بالله بعمل عظيم جزاك الله خيرا ولا يجب أن يقوم به كل مسلم And what you are doing is really is a great job, and uh, we, myself, I thank you for this, uh, for this hard work and great job. And uh, when he was traveling, we noticed that there isn't. 
much between the Western and the Islam, except knowing what Islam. You know, just very little uh, push. So when they know oh, it, they will make believe in it. The Akhir, the Albania, I accept Shafi, I come to Salah, show that the Qasam is the Ulama of the Ain, Alman, he will tell you they know they know. بعد ما حكينا أنا بدي أصلي وأخطب الجمعة أنا وأصلي يوم الجمعة بالنار قال لي واحد منهم ناسحة إنه أنت بدك تدخلنا في الإسلام وتشوف لو فرض ما أنا ما بدخلكم لو دعوكم الإسلام أنتوا عندكم ثلاثة عندكم موسى وعيسى عندكم اثنين موسى وعيسى أنا عندي ثلاثة موسى وعيسى ومحمد إذا أنتم دخلتوا معي تربحون محمدا ويبقى لكم موسى وعيسى إذا أنا دخلت معكم بصر محمد. I met you Muslim, you'll gain, you'll have Musa, Sayyidina Musa, Naysa, and Muhammad. But if I become a Christian, I will lose Muhammad, I will do that. <laughs> that Allah challenges the world, humanity, in the Quran. So, قُلْ لَئِنُ لِتَمَأَتِ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنِّ أَلَا يَعْتُ لِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَعْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضِ الْمِثْلِهِ So, for different 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 states. Now, this is the challenge of 1400 years. It stood. The world has not been able to produce anything like the Quran. But today, the Christians, the Arab Christians, they say they have succeeded. They produce this new Injil. What does it say? Just read it aloud, the title. This is the new Injil to challenge the Quran. You say we can't produce, we produce it. Listen, listen now. This is the new Injil I'm reading now. Kitab al-Sakina, Magdisi. You have in the Quran, Makkiya, Madaniya. You have got Magdisi. So now, maybe this, the ignorant of the maybe there's something there about some ayah reading to an Abhi in Baitul Muqaddas. Magdisi. Okay, make it easy for you to solve it. To take it in. That's my possibility. I told the Al Ayah, 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 Al سيرة المسيح بلسان عربي فظيع سووا نفس طريقة القرآن خطباته وكاتبين مثلا آيات آية فلانية مقدسي مقدسي يعني المقدس هذا مكية أو مدنية يعني حاولوا يقلدوا تهديد يعني القرآن سووا مقدسي مقدس في المقدس فبدي رأينا الجيل الجيل هذا الجيل الجديد طبعوا هلا على أساس أنه يغشوا العباد المسلمين بدل يقولون they read this from Monte Carlo Radio, like Abdul Samad, Abdul Basit. He said the man is dead, but they can imitate, they have learned, the artists, they can imitate Abdul Samad, Abdul Basit. Mm -hmm. You know the beauty, the way Basit is always from heaven. <laughs> they can do that, and you listen to Basit, who is reading. Any objection? Any objection from anybody? Huh? يقول في اعتراض على هذا الكلام نعم يروه حتى بلهجة عبد الباسط من مونتي كارلو أبو الحلب يعتراض على هذا اللهجة مثلا نعم نعم قل يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن يوجيش نعم 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 Somebody here. Come, come. Let me read it. 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 Let me read it
That book gave me a start in life. That brought me to this. I will be here. بلسان عربية قصية أنا كنت معلم اشتغلت معلم ستين سنة لو يجي تلميذ بالابتدائي يكتب لي بهذا الأسلوب هذا الإنشاء صفته الله أكبر هذا لسان عربي قصية لو يجي قطعة عربية مثل هذا الأسلوب هذا يضرب القصة فقط ولا تخاف إن لكم عند الله جنات نزلا نزلا ما بصفصف الجنات نزلا للناس للنازلين بها خطأ يعني في أغراض وأخطاء وضعف باللغة ولا قال السلام عربي هذه أخي أنت أنت ما شاء الله أنت تب يعني تب باللغة العربية يعني كتاب بالنسبة للمسلطة والسلطة مش عليهم أنت أنت مستوى لغتك يعني في عالم يعني وضعت على الكتاب كثير يعني صوب وضعت على الكتاب وضعت ما نعرف تعبير الكتاب يو ميك أن تير كوندي رون عربي أستطيع أن بيوتنا إن الصلح لهم لغة الإنجيل ما رضوا ما رضوا شاب هنا يرجعون صارم وبليء باللغة العربية ما قبلوا لغة الإنجيل بالنسبة لما يكتب الآن لغة غاية الضعف. His Highness the Emir and His Highness the Prime Minister received at the Council of Ministers headquarters this morning the Islamic author Ahmed Didat, who is now visiting Bahrain to deliver religious lectures. The Mayor and His Highness the Prime Minister welcomed the Islamic author and wished him a good stay here. Their Highnesses highlighted the role being played by the Islamic author in the fields of Islamic awareness and the serving of Islamic nations' causes. Their Highnesses also stressed the importance of setting up Islamic lectures and symposiums which would benefit all Muslims. They wished the Islamic author every success in his spiritual task. The audience was attended by the Foreign Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, the Justice and Islamic Affairs Minister, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa, the Interior Minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Transportation Minister, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Justice Assistant Undersecretary for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Dej bin Hamid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa.